Hello, everybody. It's so wonderful to do this online uh, lead talks, Huddle. And uh, again, we are going to go back to the same theme that is purpose, integrity, and uh, excellence. But in this midst of uh, lockdown, you know, there are so many challenges that are there. Like, one, what do we do with the time that we have? Two is, how do we plan when there is no walls of a clock that is there, just like how we go regular? Uh, in the morning and come back in the evening and um, also there's so much of fear of uncertainty what is going to happen some of us might lose jobs some of us might have a cut down some of us might have to even take up something new that we are not used to and I want to start off by saying you know how limitations pushed me into innovation limitations pushed me into digging down the talents that were there inside but I just had forgone them for example, at the age of 19 is when this whole passion of playing the guitar started off for me. I went for music lessons when I was 15, but on the first day, the guitar teacher said, don't come back again, you have no qualities of music. Now, when I was 19, I was in this Bible college, Axe Institute, and I had this sudden deep desire to learn the guitar. But those days, my monthly budget or support was 10 rupees a month. Now, with 10 rupees a month, there is no way that I'll be able to get, get a guitar. There was an old broken guitar that was there in the corner, very badly shaped, warped guitar I picked up. And, but there were no strings. And I have no money to buy a set of strings. I remember there was a company called Karuna, not Corona, but Karuna Strings. And this was so bad that a brand new set of strings would be worse than a used strings. And that was 40 rupees. I could not even afford but you see, passion pushed my limitations into innovation. So what I did, I picked up broken strings, tied them together and put them on the guitar. And I started to practice seven hours every day. And in two months, there was a talent night in the Bible college. And my principal, uh, Richard Nanakan, was there. And when I performed, he came and he says, Benny, this is wonderful. I never knew that you could play the guitar. And that was the start of my journey as a musician and later on, in 2004, when I got invitation to play for uh, the official welcoming of South African athletes at the Olympic Games in Greece, one of the key things they told me was that I cannot share my faith, but I have to only display my talent. But for me, what Jesus did in my life cannot be kept secret at all because having no musical talents where I could not even clap to the right beat or sing to the right tune to end up becoming a musician is a miracle for me and I want to attribute that to the right source and that is Jesus Christ and again limitations pushed me to the point of saying God I want to design something that will attract people to come and look at my guitar and ask me questions and in turn I could share my testimony back in fact I remember there were quite a lot of South African athletes who came up including the ambassador the sports minister who came up and asked me questions is how did you end up designing this guitar and I could share my testimony Again, same thing with my talking. You know, I was really bad in my talking. In fact, I was ashamed of my voice. My voice sounds like a girl. Even till today, when I pick up the phone, they always call me madam. And uh, I was ashamed of my voice. And whenever I would go on the stage, I would not even speak because my voice was uh, so tiny, so feminine that <coughs> I really did not want to talk. But as an instrumental guitarist, you can only cater to a certain level of audience when it comes to live performances. And my uh, audience were of all kinds of variety of people. And it's really difficult to keep the attention for one hour. But limitations pushed me into talking, saying, okay, how can I incorporate stories and testimonies with my instrumental music? So that's how it started off, sharing stories, sharing my testimony, and part of that is playing my guitar as an instrumental artist. And it was an amazing combination that today, everywhere I go, people know me, just not as a musician, but also someone who talks and shares my stories and my testimony. That's how talking started off. And I could be a motivational speaker, I could be a public speaker. And today I want to challenge you is, the limitations that you have today, look at them and find out, is there any purpose that I can push myself, stretch myself in a way that I will be able to 
dig deep the hidden talents that are there in me and use it for a purpose that God has pushed me to. As we are going through this lockdown uh, season, there will be surely challenges of uh, rejection and fear and uncertainty and, and, and how do we find purpose in the midst of this? Now, we can find purpose when we have reached the heights and we can use examples of people who have overcome all these things and they've gone on top. But I want to tell you that um, I could still find purpose are more than even just the purpose to know God's will in the midst of rejection. Uh, my dream, as most of you know, was to travel to one country before I die. Could not imagine anything beyond that and bigger that, bigger than that. And here, um, when I asked God, he said, Benny, I want you to travel to every single country on this earth. And uh, this was in around 2001 or so. And by then, I had been to a few countries. And uh, I was happy that I started to travel. But you know, to every country is a God-sized dream. But I'm a human. My mind is limited. So what I did, I downsized God-sized dream to something that my mind could comprehend. That is, you know, you travel here and there. And by now I had already finished in 2002, I just finished about five countries and I was doing really well as a concert artist. And I got an invitation to go to the USA uh, and work with YWAM in Santa Fe. And my leader, Karen Lefferty, the one who wrote the song, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, had invited me to come and join her staff. And now I went and applied for a religious workers visa for five years and then it just goes on and, and I was excited. I said, God, this is amazing. American dream for sure is a God-sized dream for me. And uh, I thought this was great. And uh, I was very excited. My brother, when he heard that, he said, oh, when he's leaving, so I need to get married. So he was in the process of getting married, but now he got everything quick. So 11th of July, 2002, he got married. But everybody knew that I was going to America. The news was uh, out there. I went and applied for my visa. And in the month of August 2002, the American consulate, they rejected my visa. I was so hurt, so broken, so shattered, felt humiliated. And I went back to Jesus and I said, Lord, please forgive the American consulate for not understanding your will for my life. Please give them another chance. So in the month of September, I went and applied again. And they rejected again. I was shattered. I have no plans. I felt like being in lockdown now because I don't have any other plans. This is the biggest dream I have and I could not understand why I was rejected because I had already been to the US once. I have a clean track record. I came back to India before the visa expired. I, I had all the documents for my visa. I could not understand why was I rejected. And in the midst of this rejection, I wanted to know what is God's will for my life. And I went, I knelt down and I prayed and I said, God, I thought this was your dream for my life. And that's when the still small voice of Jesus spoke saying, Benny, my dream for you is not for you to settle down in America. My dream for you is to travel to every single country on this earth, 257 countries. I said, God, but that is too big. He said, yes, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And that is how I started off my travels. And I was able to go on and finish this world record travels, where in 2010, I arrived in my last country, Pakistan, and I broke the world record. Now, you see, in the midst of testing trial times, midst of times when you feel defeated, when you feel rejected, even for doing the right thing that you would think. The key thing is to go back and ask God, God, what is your purpose for my life? What is your will for my life? I'll tell you, that will give you the strength to walk through this valley, walk through these challenges. But I'll tell you one thing, there is a very thin line between finding God's will, God's purpose for my life and being over ambitious. The world we live in today, you know, ambition is a very strong word. You know, generally ambition is used as a bit of a negative word. But today in this world we live in, ambition is all about, you know, becoming famous, becoming big, 
you know, overcoming challenges and becoming rich. And I had a challenge in that too. Now comes the word integrity here. Integrity in terms of how do I find my integrity as I'm walking in purpose, especially when you're doing well in life. You know, just because you're on top of the world doesn't mean that you're walking in your purpose. Now, I had just broken the world record in 2010, 22nd of November. I had come back from Pakistan, 245 nations. And I was enjoying this, uh, this whole uh, attention and uh, celebrating this achievement and also thanking God for what he has done in my life. And I got the certificate from the World Records Academy from uh, US. And uh, by January, I got a message from them and uh, saying that, Benny, one of your records is broken. See, I had broken six world records. And one of them is that being to only the sovereign countries, 196 sovereign countries in six years, six months, and 22 days. And a man called Ely from uh, uh, US had broken this record in three years and three months. I was like, God, my record is gone. And uh, it short-lived. So I sat down and I worked out as well. I have, I have the resources now. I have all the connections. I know so many ambassadors. I know so many people uh, all over the world who can fix these things. So I worked out everything and found out that I can travel to 196 countries in two and a half years because by now I'm an experienced traveler. All I needed is to find out God's will. See, sometimes you might have everything that you want in order to achieve the ambitious plan in your mind. But you know what? Ultimately, what matters is God's will. And that's what happened. I went down and I prayed and I said, God, can you please give me your seal of approval as I journey to make your name great by breaking this world record? The Lord spoke to me saying, Benny, you travel the world to share what I have done in your life. You travel the world to share the hope that you found in Jesus. You travel the world so that uh, the name of Jesus will be famous. But your purpose of traveling the world was never to break the world record. That was not the intention. It is a bonus. And once I found that, I said, God, I'm sorry for being ambitious. I through that whole aspect of traveling the world again. And I continue to walk in the purpose that is to play my instrument and to share my testimony and to spread the message of hope that I found in Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you, dear friends, is in the midst of rejection, try to find out God's will for your life. In the midst of heights of achievements, you still need to find God's will and purpose in your life. And that happens when you have that integrity. Finding God's will when you are nothing is easy because you have nothing, you're broken. But at the heights of achievement, you have to be intentional in finding God's purpose and will for your life. God bless you all.